most people are like a falling leaf that drifts and turns in the air, flutters and falls to the ground, but a few others are like stars which travel one defined path, no wind reaches them, they have within themselves their guide and path. Solitude is independence. To hold our tongues when everyone is gossiping, to smile without hostility at people and institutions, to compensate for the shortage of love in the world with more love in small, private matters, to be more faithful in our work, to show greater patience, to forego the cheap revenge obtainable from mockery and criticism. All these are things we can do. Loneliness is a way by which destiny endeavors to lead a man to himself. What we are today comes from our thoughts of yesterday and our present thoughts build our life tomorrow. Our life is the creation of our mind. A lack of friends is a sign that a man has many hobbies and time. Wisdom cannot be imparted. Wisdom that a wise man attempts to impart always sounds like foolishness to someone else. Knowledge can be communicated, but not wisdom. One can find it, live it, do wonders through it, but one cannot communicate and teach it. Some of us think holding on makes us strong, but sometimes it is letting go. Those who cannot think or take responsibility for themselves need and clamor for a leader. You are only afraid if you are not in harmony with yourself. Theory is knowledge that does not work. Practice is when everything works and you don't know why. It is not our purpose to become each other, it is to recognize each other, to learn to see the other and honor him for what he is. To achieve the possible, we must attempt the impossible again and again. There is no reality except the one contained within us. If you hate a person, you hate something in him that is part of yourself. What isn't part of ourselves doesn't disturb us. You show the world as a complete unbroken chain, an eternal chain linked together by cause and effect. There is a miracle in every new beginning. You must find your dream, then the way becomes easy. The man of power is ruined by power, the man of money by money, the submissive man by subservience, the pleasure seeker by pleasure. People with courage and character always seem sinister to the rest. Love your suffering. Do not resist it. Do not flee from it. It is only your aversion to it that hurts. Nothing else. I believe that I am not responsible for the meaningfulness or meaninglessness of life, but that I am responsible for what I do with the life I've got. Faith and doubt go hand in hand. They are complementaries. One who never doubts will never truly believe. The only reality is the one we have inside us. What makes most people's lives so artificial and unworthy is that they falsely regard outside images as reality and they never allow their own inner world to speak. 
Words do not express thoughts very well. They always become a little different immediately after they are expressed, a little distorted, a little foolish. What could I say to you that would be of value, except that perhaps you seek too much, that as a result of your seeking you cannot find? Learn what is to be taken seriously and laugh at the rest. It may be important to great thinkers to examine the world, to explain and despise it, but I think it is only important to love the world, not to despise it, not for us to hate each other, but to be able to regard the world and ourselves and all beings with love, admiration and respect. Oh, love isn't there to make us happy. I believe it exists to show us how much we can endure. The mind is international and supranational. It ought to serve not war and annihilation, but peace and reconciliation. Those who are too lazy and comfortable to think for themselves and be their own judges obey the laws. Others sense their own laws within them. There is no reality except the one contained within us. That is why so many people live such an unreal life. They take the images outside of them for reality and never allow the world within to assert itself. Gaze into the fire, into the clouds, and as soon as the inner voices begin to speak, surrender to them. Don't ask first whether it's permitted or would please your teachers or father or some god. You will ruin yourself if you do that. I have always been a great dreamer. In dreams I have always been more active than in my real life, and these shadows sapped me of my health and energy. But it matters little that you suffer, so long as you feel alive with a sense of the close bond that connects all living things, so long as love does not die. In each individual the spirit is made flesh, in each one the whole of creation suffers, in each one a saviour is crucified. Our mind is capable of passing beyond the dividing line we have drawn for it, beyond the pairs of opposites of which the world consists, other, new insights begin. I wanted only to try to live in accord with the promptings which came from my true self. Why was that so very difficult? Everything becomes a little different as soon as it is spoken out loud. Without words, without writing and without books, there would be no history, there could be no concept of humanity. What isn't part of ourselves does not disturb us. I've always believed, and I still believe, that whatever good or bad fortune may come our way, we can always give it meaning and transform it into something of value. I have been and still am a seeker, but I have ceased to question stars and books. I have begun to listen to the teaching my blood whispers to me. I began to understand that suffering and disappointments and melancholy are there not to vex us or cheapen us or deprive us of our dignity, but to mature and transfigure us. Often it is the most deserving people who cannot help loving those who destroy them. I learned through my body and soul that it was necessary to sin, that I needed lust, 
that I had to strive for property and experience nausea and the depths of despair in order to learn not to resist them, in order to learn to love the world and no longer compare it with some kind of desired imaginary vision of perfection, but to leave it as it is, to love it and be glad to belong to it. It is not for me to judge another man's life. I must judge, I must choose, I must spurn purely for myself, for myself alone. Youth ends when egotism does. Maturity begins when one lives for others. Trees are sanctuaries. Whoever knows how to speak to them, whoever knows how to listen to them, can learn the truth. They do not preach learning and precepts. They preach, undeterred by particulars, the ancient law of life. I live in my dreams. That's what you sense. Other people live in dreams, but not in their own. That's the difference. So the tree rustles in the evening when we stand uneasy before our own childish thoughts. Trees have long thoughts, long breathing and restful, just as they have longer lives than ours. They are wiser than we are, as long as we do not listen to them. But when we have learned how to listen to trees, then the brevity and the quickness and the childlike hastiness of our thoughts achieve an incomparable joy. Whoever has learned how to listen to trees no longer wants to be a tree. He wants to be nothing except what he is. That is home. That is happiness. Thought-provoking quotes have the power to inspire us. Which quote from the video resonated with you the most? Let me know in the comments below.